Hello, I'm Atuba George, and I'm so excited to be bringing you God's truth today. Now, I know we have a few days to Christmas and to the end of the year. Now, listen to me. Don't make any excuse for not being happy in this season. No complaints at all. Don't say, oh, um, I don't have uh, anything to celebrate the Christmas with. Listen, that's why the Lord commanded us to be calling forth our daily bread. Now, are you ready for us to do that? Listen, if you will release your faith right now, I'm telling you the truth, a miracle of provision will come your way. So are you ready? Declare this with me. Say, Father, I receive today my daily bread. It's coming to me now in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Now, listen, in seasons like this, realize something. Jesus' coming brought joy to the earth. His coming brought joy to our lives. And so when we celebrate his birth, you must remember it's a season to be joyful. The same way the good news of joy came to you, you should ensure that the same good news gets to those around you. Now, not just good news in words only. Do something special for someone. And, and you're going to see, see, as we celebrate Jesus, that's what we're doing. Forget about what the world is doing. You, we know what we're doing. So, you know, some people say, eh, it's not, it's not, it's not Christians that set the date. I mean, whoever set the date, we'll all agree on one thing. Jesus was born. <laughs> Praise God. And, and listen, it is not about getting the exact day that he was born that we are celebrating. See, because because you you want to really 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 know. It's not so much about the day he was born; it's about the mission he came to accomplish. So, if you celebrate the birth of Jesus and you are not a party or you are not manifesting the purpose of his coming, then your celebration is useless. So that's why I'm telling you today: look for someone to do something good in this season. Look for someone. At what level you are. Don't, don't say I don't have anything. No, you do have. You have. You have. At what level you are, look for someone to bless. Look for and just tell them, look, I'm blessing you because Jesus came. And I'm a believer in Jesus and everything he represents. So that's why I'm doing this for you. Whatever your level, it, it can be to bless a security man, maybe your neighbor's security man, or but remember your own security man if you do have one first. Wherever the person, the person that your customer in the market, have you thought about it? You know, the 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 guy that you know, we all use cars, and then you go to this filling station, and the guy who dispenses fuel for you. Sometimes, even if you're if you're if you're like me, who have filling stations that we go to. And you have your favorite person there. Somehow, somehow you just have this person who honors you, you know, and, and then you remember them at seasons like this. Just go to them. I say, oh, maybe when you want to buy your foil next time, just go to them and say, oh, you know what? I want to make you smile today because Jesus came and give them something. Look for someone to bless. Just look for someone to make happy. It's all part of why Jesus came. Remember, he says, I am come that they might have life and that they might have it in abundance. And amplifies this to the full till it overflows. So that is one thing. And that one, maybe they've given him something already. No, you give them something. See, you give them something. Look for someone to bless. I want to read a scripture to you, Nehemiah. Nehemiah chapter 8. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Nehemiah chapter 8 and verse 10. Now, they were celebrating, you know, after, you know, they got permission to build the 
temple and the house of the Lord and they began to do all this work. And so now Nehemiah was instructing them. He says, then he said to them, verse 10, Nehemiah chapter 8 and verse 10. Then he said to them, go your way, eat the fat, drink the sweet and send portions to those for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is a holy, is holy to our Lord. Do not sorrow for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Praise God. You know, that's where we got that scripture from, that statement from. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Or the joy of the Lord is my strength. Now, he is telling them how to activate that joy. See, he says, go your way. Eat the fat. Drink the sweet. This thing, don't just carry a moody, you know, appearance this season and say, I beg, the country is hard. No! Stay up joy in your heart. Do this for yourself. Just stay up joy in your heart. He says, eat the fat, drink the sweet, do something special for yourself. And when you do, he says, send portions to those for whom nothing is prepared. Do something special for your family. Do something special for yourself. And then, when you're doing something special for yourself, send portions to someone else. Send something to someone. Think about somebody and, and just send them something. No matter how little it is, it is usually the thoughtfulness that gets people's attention. So this is that season and Jesus will be glad with what you're doing. If you do what I'm telling you, he will be glad and he will bless you. Listen to me. Many times, you know, we've, we've been in situations like that where the Lord will instruct us to give, you know, something. Sometimes even our tithe, he'll command us or oh, send it to that, that person. And like, oh, okay, Lord. It's his money. It's not our money. It's his money. So when he says send it to that person, we, we know that's a child of God we're saying. Doesn't matter. See, you see, we'll, we'll grow into all these things soon. We will. And then when we do, the testimony that we get is the amazing part of this thing. So you now realize that giving, it's, I, I've, I've, had, I've had many testimonies of people who were about to give up. And suddenly when they've made up their mind, that, oh God, today if I don't get a miracle, I'm going to do this or I'm going to do that or I'm going to change my mind concerning this. And then right there and there, someone calls I said, the Lord commanded me to send you something. Now, what gets to them is not the amount of what they received. What gets to them is how did you know that I was going through this situation? Say, well, I didn't know. God just spoke to me. God spoke to you. Say, yeah. You see, it's proof that God loves the person. And that is what breaks. I have seen many people in such situations. That is what breaks them. Like, you say, God told you. So yeah. And sometimes they start crying. Because they've seen already the vision of them giving up. They've seen that vision. And then suddenly, God interrupts. And that tells you something that he hears. In that small corner of yours where you were making that decision. He heard you. Oh, he heard you. He said, the problem has never been God reaching out to you. The problem has been this. Many times the people God wants to use to reach out to you are not in tune to him. That's why we have taken up this assignment from the Lord to teach God's children one thing. How to hear his voice and respond to his voice. Because you see... If we all stay tuned to the voice of God, I'm telling you the truth. You will lack nothing. No one will lack anything around you. Because if we all hear his voice, he's going to be giving us instructions and you don't need to know what someone is going through. You are in your home this season, for example, and you are making your Christmas food. And while you're making it, you hear the voice of God say, take some food to so so and so family. And I, um, if I go now, they say, Lord, but the Lord is commanding you to do so. Okay, we'll do that. And then you pack the food 
I mean, and take it down to them and knock on the door. He said, oh, how are you guys doing? You know, ooh, we're just making our Christmas meal. And, and the Lord spoke to us to bring some for you. I said, really? He said, yeah. You know, I know it's not much. I said, no, 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 no. You said the Lord said, say, yes, the Lord said no. Wow. Do you know, we had nothing. You know, it's amazing how sometimes you think people are okay until by the Spirit of God, you're able to break through into their minds. And how does that happen? It's not just for you to sit there and say, Lord, show me what's in people's mind. No. By obeying the command of the Lord per time, he tells you, go visit this person. Ah, Lord, he said, but, but go visit this person. Okay, Lord. And then you show up in the person's house like, whoa, what brought you here? God said, I should come and visit you. Sometimes it's even a call. Call so and so person. See? Listen to me. This season, do something different. I'm telling you this because there is a blessing coming upon all of God's children in this season. The Jewish people call it a Shemitah year. Now, it's a year when things are, there's a reset. So, if there's a reset taking place, then you want to start afresh on a good note. Is it that what you love to do? Then start now. Take advantage of this season. I mean, at this time, you know, you, you don't have to think, uh, if I give somebody something, I don't think I want something from them. No, at least the season affords you that opportunity to give freely without anybody thinking too much of it. But then the truth also is, what if they think so is none of your business? As long as you're obeying the voice of God, they may not understand. Even you may not understand sometimes. But you see, soon you would understand. You will see the reason. Listen to me. God is setting you up for a blessing. And as you keep your focus on Jesus, listening to him day by day, when you wake up in the morning, you see, that's what you should be thinking about. The first thoughts in your mind should be, Lord, what would you have me do today? Yeah. Because remember, and I told you this a few days ago, his plan is to bless all the families of the earth. Brothers and sisters, what about the families around you? Have the blessing of God come to them yet? Listening for his voice. Listening for his instructions. Get something out for someone. Ask him, Lord, as I'm sharing this with you now, begin to ask him, Lord, who do you want me to bless in this season? Who do you want me to send portions to in this season? Can you open my eyes to see? Open my ears to hear your voice concerning such people. I want to send your love. I want to send, send your blessing to someone today. And because you pray, the Spirit of God will make you see the person. That's how it works. You know, you can just pray like that and then the next thing someone comes to your house you know, and you're just like, ah, you know, there's this person I met yesterday and then blah, 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 blah. Then, Why the person is talking? The Spirit of God said, yeah, you've been asking me who you should send. That person he's talking about should, should, should get something from you. Like, oh. Now, when the Holy Spirit is, is convicting you or convincing you of something or speaking to you, you will know. You will know. Someone said, I don't know if God has spoken to me, but it's me that is not hearing me. No, he hasn't spoken yet. Because when he speaks, you will know when you're disobeying him. You will know. You, 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 know, you, you know when you, you know you're supposed to do something, but like, no. You'll be giving yourself all the reasons why you shouldn't do it, but your own heart is telling you otherwise. Now, that's how you know that this is God telling you to do something, see? So not because I say so now, you now start thinking, okay, who do I look for? Who do I look for? Maybe God is telling me this one or maybe God. No, the moment God begins to tell you about something to do. Because if you don't do it, you'll be walking in disobedience. Now, the moment you start walking in disobedience, you will know in your own heart. Praise God. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Listen, let this word motivate you to wake up to this responsibility. Because you're not only doing it for el someone else, you are bringing joy to your heart. You know my time is up right now.
But I want to pray for you. I pray that the Holy Spirit will open your heart and flood his love through you. Not just for you, but let it come to everyone around you. I pray that because of you, let families that are around you feel and see the blessing of the Lord. I pray the Lord enriches you so much so that you become a blessing to many. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I declare it is well with you today. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.